Hey guys, I'm Matt and I'm cycling around the world. Well, not exactly cycling today. Today I'm actually going to be going on a tour of the Ha Long Bay. Uh, I'm currently staying in the Zoe Brothers Hostel. Later, we're going to take a look at this hostel. This hostel is made out of like 35 or so shipping containers, which is pretty cool. If you guys are first here, the Hostel Territory is a review series of videos that I do about cool little hostels as I travel. And I think this one is deserving of a review. We're gonna take a boat tour of the uh, Halong Bay. It's supposed to be the thing you gotta do. I booked it through the hostel here. It cost 800,000 dong, uh, which works out to be about 35 US dollars. So today's tour, everything involved in today's activities cost me uh, the entirety of $35. That includes a meal, a boat ride uh, to a few different places in the, in the bay, and uh, transportation. It's a little cold, so it's not like normally you go to Halong Bay and swim on the beach and stuff, but we'll see what's in store for us. Hello. Xin chào. Okay guys, the weather could be a little bit better, but we have some friends. This is Will Hi. and Hui Xin, and then more people. Say hello. hello. When you travel on these tours, like 60% is the people that you're with and 40% is the things that you see. So, so far so good. I haven't been led by a flag ever. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a Chinese airport. Look at this table, guys. This table was cut from one trunk of a tree. That's incredible, and look at this one. Look at the length of this table. Wow. If those trees could have talked, what would they have said? Probably don't cut me down. A bit chilly to swim. You think I should swim? <laughs> I would be uh, an oddball if I did. But I'm an oddball anyways. My name is I begin for to thank you to visit the Halong Bay. A man with our shine, which and captain. Good plan to get you a detention. Actually, it might be fun to do a tour, like actually work on one of these tours, just for free. And then I can do the English portion and they can do like the, their, their portion in their language. It could be Thailand or wherever. Hey guys and welcome to the tour. We're gonna take a, take a trip around How Long Bay. It's beautiful. You're gonna enjoy it. I've got a bunch of, I, I think I'd be really good at that. I'd make a pretty good flight attendant. I'd be like those flight attendants that everybody laughs at. Makes video, videos up, puts on social media, fumbling with the gas mask. And, Faking like, like I'm passing out. Man, it's, it's like it's like taking a shot of Guilin and just duplicating it here in Vietnam. So like if I was cycling on the road right now, you know, that would be the view side to side. Like a flooded Guilin. <laughs> That's what it is. That is a uh, notable rock there. Do you see a cat? Do you see a little cat? Did you feel that? That's, that's one way to park, huh? That's one way to park. <laughs> if it ain't tight, it ain't right, right? <laughs> Days like this, you wish for a really, really bright sun. No bright sun. So. Overcast. 
Overcast how long? Day. If you want to take a uh, cruise more than a day, maybe two or three days, you can you can uh, chill out on one of those uh, those boats. Personally, if I if I get a live aboard, I want to do some scuba diving. Maybe we'll do some of those when we get to Indonesia. I'll take you with me. Getting a little crowded. I got the reason to explain that. Everybody's jockeying for position in front of uh, in front of this, these rocks here. <laughs> That's a different color. That, that rock right out there is is two two cocks are fighting. Hen and cock. Hen and cock. Hen and cock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't no hen touching my cock. Shipwrecks or zombie apocalypse. If either of those happen, this place would be a nice place to either get shipwrecked or to spend time during the zombie apocalypse. You've got fresh water, you've got the king of secure houses to stay in. I mean, it's basically a, a natural structure carved into stone, multiple rooms, you've got like <laughs> this like elevated area. This is the loft where you kind of have your bedroom. And then the kitchen is out there where that natural spring is. The amphitheater, where you kind of hang out and entertain the guests that will never come. <laughs> Hallways, adjoining rooms. I spent five years in that side of the cave. I'm gonna move all, oh, wow. houses in this place okay guys zombie apocalypse I'll invite a few of you over we can all share the uh, share the space together see I'm a kind guy this place is incredibly large Easy, easy to pass up the entryway to this place. And then, I mean, could you imagine being the first guy that set foot in here? You could see tons of them on, on all these little rock islands. But this one, it's like <laughs> enormous. Could you imagine living like a sustainable life here? Like really comfortable, like uh, Robinson Crusoe style. You know, you've got all your little rooms in here indoor pool you draw some water from the outside into one of the caverns and you make it like like this spring-fed pool you got your water your fishing situation has been perfected over the years of solitude and then somebody comes in and says we're here to rescue you and you're like turn the hell around don't tell anybody you saw me get out of here <laughs> and then as uh, as that solitary life starts getting to you you build your own little gift shop and you build, build a little rock, a rock dummy behind and you walk up to the gift shop. And you, How much is this? How much is this? Oh, this guy's a real ball buster, this guy. Useless rocks that are in your mind, like, oh, that's a snow globe. Oh, that, that's a keychain. As you drift off into insanity. <laughs> yep, luxury living for a castaway. It'd be nicer if you had some friends though. It'd get a little boring after a while. I wonder just how many of these caverns exist within, within all of these rocks in this area. 
I bet there's probably more than I realize. So the boats drop you off over there, then they cruise over here and kind of chill out and then give you a few minutes to explore the caves and then they come back over here, pick you up and you're off. Ah, that's a welcome sight. Dinner on the boat. Celery-ish, we've got some shell uh, clams, some pork it looks like. <laughs> it is. It is. It looks like. I always add it looks like because you never know. All right, next stop, the Pearl Museum and kayaking. Each of these ropes here hangs suspended on down with little baby oysters and over time they grow and grow and they're given like the ideal circumstances to hopefully produce pearls, worst case scenario. He got some oysters out of it. This is Hong. <laughs> She's the pilot. I'm not driving right now, that's you. <laughs> and we're spinning around. <laughs> we're going into the open ocean. I think we're going to America. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stop talking on camera and start helping her drive the boat. Was it just washing maybe? Maybe it's just washing. Just washing. What do you say, washing? Maybe if they get too dirty that uh, oysters aren't very healthy or something. It keeps them strong. Interesting. Each day. Yeah, and that's for year. Happen inside two years. So two years you grow, and then after two years you put in one of those, no. and then four years you get that. Different type process. Oh, oh different type, different, different process. Yeah. And this size, the pearl maximum 20 millimeter. This one, I think, six, six millimeter. So if you look, these are like little membranes that help to, I think, seat the pearl inside the oyster. And so they put the the mother of pearl insert the blank into the oyster and then they make sure to seat it so that it doesn't kill the oyster and then they put the oyster back in and hopefully two or more years later you have uh, you have yourself a pearl There goes the boat. We're at the third location for the day. Somewhere on that boat, one of those guys has my cell phone. Who is it? I don't know. There's about six options. What are you supposed to do? I was so focused on protecting my phone when I'm riding, you know? Watch out, somebody could ride alongside you and grab your phone, hold it tight. Don't let it out of your sight, but 
I left my phone on that boat when I went and looked at the oysters and did that little kayak excursion. When I returned to the boat, it was gone. My uh, find my phone option was turned on on the iPhone, so I turned it on to look for it because I have my other phone, thank God, like my backup phone, my drone phone, which is here. And so I turned it on. It said that find my phone was actually on on the other phone, the missing phone. I, I tried to search, but Gosh darn it, the phone was powered off. Somebody grabbed it and instantly turned the power off and uh, nothing I can do about it. I talked to him, but what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, yell at everybody on the boat? That was my primary travel phone. That, that thing had all my maps in it, all my maps are gone. A bunch of pictures are gone, but most of my pictures I upload. I did back up my phone on the, on the computer recently, so maybe I can sync up uh, this iPhone X and it'll it'll clone clone my uh, clone that phone. So watch your stuff, guys. Don't be stupid like me and be too trusting. I end up being too trusting and I just sort of like ah no, nobody's gonna take it. The last picture I took was of our meal, which was pretty good. An overhead view. And everybody at the table remembers. Hey, Matt, I saw you take a picture, and that was where I had left my phone, and then I and then I exited the boat. Find My Phone has an option so that you could either erase your phone and once you erase it remotely, you can never find it. I'm gonna have to chalk this one up to being uh, being dumb and naive. It's a good thing I have another phone. If I didn't have another phone, I'd be uh, disconnected for a while. All right, so this, is, this has been a learning experience. I gotta swallow this experience, put it down inside, and then move on. Otherwise, I'm gonna be bummed all the time. That's our boat right there. It's sort of like murder on the Orient Express. One of those players on that boat is the culprit who has stolen my phone. What are you gonna do? All right, congratulations, whoever you are. You have a very fresh, freshly erased iPhone 7 Plus. I'm gonna go back to the hotel and sync up my old phone, and hopefully all the data from the, from the one I, I lost will transfer over. All right, guys, I'm back at the phone store for the second time in like three, four days. It's like insult to injury, adding insult to injury. Anyways, we're gonna be set up real soon. I'll have this phone hooked up for Vietnam. I will not have a backup phone anymore. So I better not lose this one and nobody better steal this one. I'm gonna treat it with the utmost of respect. We're gonna get some snacks. Snacks? Yeah. Okay, nothing settles a frustrated nerve than some grub. I will show you some uh, Vietnamese local food. Okay, that's what I like. I like the local food. Okay, so this is fried. Uh, inside I have uh, noodle. Noodle? Noodle and okay. move roof. And uh, move roof and egg. Okay. And uh, on, on the vegetable inside. Pate so, pate so. Pate so. Pate so, pate so cake. But it's all cake. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Mmm. It's good. The egg open. Yeah. Good. Never had an egg roll with an actual egg inside. That's what it is, basically. So he's from uh, Mong Thai. That's where we started, with the border to China. This one for you. All right. This one for me. Color is interesting, huh? Chicken. 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 And uh, forgettable. This forgettable very uh, good for healthy. Yeah. Good for health. That's not just a normal uh, vegetable. That's uh, that's like an herb. It has a very basil, basilish flavor. Okay. It's good. All right, guys. That's enough for the day. We'll catch up tomorrow get my excessive optimism working back in my favor. Take it easy, see you later.